You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. My name is Ari Whitner, and this is your NXT update for Wednesday, June 21st, 2017. Thank you all for listening. It is the 398th episode of NXT. So, yes, in two weeks, NXT turns 400. And I celebrate doing about 370 of these. Um, But until then, let's go through NXT 398. uh, Kicking things off with Ember Moon's return to action from injury. as She takes on Peyton Royce and the continuation of their hostilities that they've had dating back to last summer. Uh, You might recall that even uh, about three or four months ago, uh, Ember had injured Billy Kay's Eclipse, which led to a forgotten storyline where they were trying to ban the Eclipse, and they just dropped that storyline cold turkey. Um, they claimed that Ember was forced to watch TakeOver Chicago, uh, that she missed after injuring herself, taking that really stupid bump on a suicide dive to the floor a few weeks before that. I would have loved to see them you know, try to force her to watch the show if she didn't want to. You know, we live in a society. You don't have to force people to do things they don't want to do. Um, But anyway, this was a match of cliches, or at least if you listen to the announcers, it was a match of cliches, as Hoist played possum and did her homework and uh, managed to stop Moon from squashing her. Ultimately, she distracted the referee just long enough so Billy Kay could interfere, and so Peyton took over for a bit. Ember made her comeback, um, and Billy Kay felt that she saw enough and tried to drag Peyton away, but Ember dove off the top rope to the outside onto Billy Kay, which gave Hoist another spurt of offense, culminating in a widow's peak. Um, However, Ember kicked out of the Widow's Peak and uh, pinned Peyton after the Eclipse. Cash Asono was stretching backstage when Hideo Itami came up and apologized for being a jerk. Ono said he completely understood why Itami was frustrated, um, but said they needed to do things the right way, and Itami agreed. Gabriel and Uriel, er- and Uriel Ely, excuse me, are back for their third appearance in NXT. Uh, you might recall these twin brothers last summer went to debut and got their butts kicked by Samoa Joe. And then later on, they did the J-O-B to the A-O-P uh, at some point. So here we are. Can they turn things around tonight if they go two-on-two? with Eric Young and Alexander Wolf? The answer is no. No, Mr. NXT. No, Mr. E.D. Brothers lose again. EY and Wolf did that annoying thing the Ascension used to do in NXT, where they just constantly tagged in and out for like about a 30, 40 second spot. They just kept tagging in and out, in and out, in and out. And I just hate that spot. It looks so stupid. And how is that really helping the team? You know, like, oh, you're getting the fresh man in there. Well, how fresh, you know, or how worn down is the other one? He's in the ring for four seconds. And most of what they do is tag in, stomp, tag in, stomp, tag in, stomp. You know, it's just annoying. Um, Anyway, Sanity picks up the win in a boring match with an assisted neck breaker. They showed a recap of the Oscar Nikki Cross match from last week and announced that next week at NXT 399, they'll do battle in a last woman standing match. We got a highlight reel for Sony Deville. At least they aren't pretending she's brand new as they show highlights of her prior matches dating back almost a year. Uh, I should point out. Uh, that Resistance is the name of the new theme song for NXT. They debuted it a month or so ago. 
personally, I think it sounds like a rejected theme for the Ultimate Fighter, but that's just me. Sonya Deville came in next to go one-on-one with Rachel Evers, who is not related at all to Lance Storm and is instead the daughter of Paul Ellering. But, of course, she's not going to use her legal name, so instead she steals the last name of her trainer. Um, Evers is the first official victim to the MMA badass, Sonya Deville. When Sony got in the ring, because, you know, she's the MMA fighter, she gets in the ring and she does the thing that you see fighters do uh, in the UFC where they get in the cage and do a little run around the cage. That's what she did. And it looked really, really dumb. Uh, Sony did get a two count off a double leg takedown. Um, it helped that when she did that, Rachel appeared to slam her head on the mat. Uh, Rachel made a comeback, so Sony took offense to this comeback. She took off her gloves and then won with a double wrist lock submission. Earlier today, Bobby Roode was having pictures taken of him when Roderick Strong arrived at the arena with his wife and son. Roode taunted him and told Marina to be with a real man, so it broke down into a huge fight. This pissed off Roode so bad that he gave Strong a title shot anytime, anywhere. So that's why in two weeks, on NXT 400, it will be Root and Strong for the title. And of course, this leads me to the question I ask a lot during these things. If this was supposed to be real, and, you know, and NXT is a show that's brand new every single week, why were Rude and Strong showing up at the arena when neither of them had anything to do on last night's show? Main event time. You know, Cassius Sono must have heard all the mean things I've said about his physique, so he kissed up to me by wearing gear inspired after my team, Chicago Bulls. And specifically, if you're a basketball fan, he was wearing the late 80s Bulls jerseys, which were just amazing in their simplicity. This was the only match all night, and really for the last month that has had much of a reaction. Um, even the women's match last week, they didn't really give a crap about until after the match had ended. But um, if you enjoy two men kicking and punching and kicking and then kicking each other some more, this is the match for you as... They kicked each other like, you know, they were getting a bonus for the number of kicks they connected with. Um, They did occasionally use an elbow or a forearm here and there, but this was a lot of kicks. Um, You know, Ono at one point turned Aleister Black blue, you know, because he's already black, so he's not turned black and blue, he's turned blue. Shut up. Anyway, Ono mocked his foe by meditating mid-match, so Black kicked him kicked him in the back to take back over. Um, the finish saw Ono make his final flurry of offense. He winds up to swing with the rolling elbow, and as he turns that last corner to throw the elbow, what he doesn't realize is Aleister Black is mid-black mass, and he, uh, Black connects knocks out the KO artist, and Aleister Black picks up the one, the two, and the three to remain undefeated. So that's going to do it for this week. Um, You know, watch the main event if you like. If you don't, you didn't miss too, too much. Um, But, you know, uh, a fun main event, let's just say that. The rest of it... You know, you can miss it, and you didn't miss anything. But thank you all for listening, and we'll talk to you again in seven days. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.